What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I've got an insane story time for y'all about this dude's neighbor who's trying to sue him for arguably the dumbest thing I've ever heard about. And I've told a lot of crazy stories on the channel. I know you guys are gonna like it though, so uh, before we get into it, be sure to press the like button. And without further ado, let's see what this guy's neighbor's suing him for! Alright, so the person who sent this in to me is a little bit older than I am. They're not like super old, but early 30s type of vibe. And they had an older uncle who uh, had some health complications and ended up sadly passing away. And this person was really upset about it because they had been really close when they were young. Since then, he had moved out of state, and so they would see each other at holidays and stuff and were still close, but it was someone who had a lot of influence on him when he was younger. And so obviously, he comes back for the services and everything, and it also just so happens that this uncle has, uh, lived a pretty good life, you know? He had accumulated some things to the point where there was going to be a reading of the will that was a, a sort of a big deal. And the person who sent this in to me didn't expect anything, literally, they were more just there to support their family. But their uncle had asked that they be at the will reading specifically. And uh, their uncle had a ton of stuff, but he ended up giving this nephew of his 15 acres of land. And it's not like it's 15 acres of land in the middle of downtown Chicago or anything, but that's a hefty chunk of land. That's a lot of land. And on top of it, it just happened to be farmland that had been in the family for an insanely long time. And it was a very sentimental plot of land because it was on the family farm, and the family farm was the place that they had spent a lot of time growing up. So it meant a lot to him. However, there was another cousin slash nephew of the uncle that was a working farmer in the area who worked on the other part of the farm. And it wasn't insanely valuable land. So after the will reading, the cousin who farmed on the land came up to him and said, Hey, when you're in the city, would it be okay if I farmed on the land? It could still be your land, but because it's like 15 acres of farmland, could I just rent the land from you to grow crops on? And, uh, he was pretty interested in that deal. If you don't take care of farmland, I'm pretty sure it just goes into a state of disrepair and slowly becomes, like, not as great for farming. So he wanted someone to upkeep it, but he's not a farmer. It would stay in the family, it would go to his cousin, his cousin would have more land to farm on. But his cousin didn't have a bunch of cash, so he agreed to sell it to his cousin for one dollar, so that way he could own it and farm on it. And the deal was that he was always welcome back. His cousin would give him a cut if he ended up selling it to a land developer in the future. And he reserved like a half acre parcel so he could build a house on it. So the deal ended up working out well for everyone. And he figured it was respectful of his uncle to keep it in the family. But he didn't want the farmland to not be used. Especially if his cousin could make money on the land. Versus it just sitting empty while he lives like states away. And because there was a lot going on, they just kind of did like a, a word of mouth handshake type of deal and said they would figure it out before he ended up going back. And a few days later, he just wanted to go walk around the land, think about his uncle, just have a little bit of a moment with the land that he had spent a lot of time on. I, I don't know, it makes sense to me. You just kind of want to go see it, say, say goodbye to your uncle in a way. Nothing weird about that. So he gets out there and he hops out of the truck and starts walking around and as he's there another truck comes up and it sits there watching him for a little bit and after a while this couple jumps out and both of them just have a Karen vibe. You know when someone just looks at you impatiently? I don't know if you guys can pick up what I'm putting down. But when someone is just giving you a look of like please hurry up you're slightly inconveniencing me. And the person who sent this to me is a little bit confused because they're walking on their land, not really knowing who these people are. So they walk up to him and say, hello. And immediately this couple just launches into, are you the nephew that got the land? Which is off-putting because he doesn't know them. And also it means that they know that his uncle passed away. And the first thing they say to him, are you the nephew that got the land? Not like we're really sorry to hear about your uncle, nothing like that. Not that they're obligated to say sorry, but if you know someone's family member just passed away and you know they got land, like, you should probably say, Hey, I'm so sorry for your loss, da 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 Like, it's not the time to bug them about their land. It was just weird. So he kind of has a weird vibe, but he says, Yes, yes, I did. And they, before he can explain anything else, say, We're gonna buy it for $12,000. 
And even if he would have decided to go sell it, it wasn't massively valuable. It's in a state where, like, things aren't exactly popping. But it was worth triple that. Like, he could have made $40,000 selling this land if he wanted to. He was helping out his cousin. But he was not about to just give it to these people for, like, a quarter of what it was worth. So he told them, no, that's not gonna work. He was selling it to his cousin. And these people that don't own the house, aren't related to his uncle or know this guy, start freaking out saying that because they live next door, they reserve the right to buy it first. It was the law. And this guy does not know these people at all. He doesn't owe them anything. And that's not a law. I don't feel like it's the rule that if you put your house up for sale, you just have to sell it to what your neighbor offers it. It's just automatically the law. Could you imagine your neighbor puts their house up for sale, you just go over and buy it for one dollar, and they're just like screwed, and now you have two houses? So he tells them, sorry, but their offer was low anyways, so he's not gonna sell it to them, he'd rather sell it to their cousin. And the, the guy of the couple at that point tries to like puff out his chest and get all intimidating and says, well that's what we want to pay for it. That doesn't change anything, dude. That's not exactly how negotiations work. Like, you can't walk into a car dealership, to a Lamborghini dealership, and say, I want to pay $5 for that. And when they say no, go, well, that's what I want to pay for it. You think they're just going to turn around and say, oh, well, if you, if you would have told us sooner, sir, we would have had it with a bow on it waiting for you. It doesn't matter if that's what you want to pay for it. That's not how it works. The person selling it gets to decide the price. So he just says sorry, and now they're trying to like guilt trip him because it's not really working on him. He's not going to agree to sell it to them. So they just start saying about how, you know, they've always wanted this land and, and they feel like they deserve it. And he's just thinking to himself, I don't care. Like it doesn't matter. He's already not in a great mood, but now they're just making everything worse and like making him pissed off when this is supposed to be some nice time on this land. So he just doubles down and says, no, I'm not going to sell you the land. Nothing you can tell me is going to make me sell you the land, so just leave. And they get all irritated and snap back that they're going to be in contact with legal help and he's going to hear back from them. And he says, okay, and doesn't back down, so they get in the car and drives away. And one thing that stands out to the guy is that they didn't say they're going to go get a lawyer. They said they were going to go get legal help. That should have been a big red flag. In their minds, legal help is probably just Googling things, but he didn't really care. But as soon as they leave, he calls his cousins about it. And the second he starts explaining them, his cousin says, oh yeah, they're nuts. Because he lived on the other side. Basically, it was the crazy people, the plot of land with his uncle's house, and then this cousin that he was selling the land to. And he starts telling him stories about how they were all always causing problems for him and his uncle and they were always complaining about everything and he's like yeah well apparently they want to buy the land for this price and he said don't sell it to him obviously he wasn't going to sell it to him so he reassures his cousin and then says that he wished he would have had a heads up he probably would have tried to roll a little bit more incognito like not have just gone up and talked to him but him and his cousin went later that week and got the agreement signed over with like a lawyer saying that uh, it was going to be the cousins to own and operate, da 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 Technically, if they sold it, they would split the profits 50-50 because he was going to maintain it and work on it, and the other guy owned it. It was a whole agreement, and he got his half acre, so they signed that agreement, and now it's officially his cousin's property, like, splitting it. Technically, his cousin had 51%. He can't stay forever there, so he ends up going back to the city in a different state that he normally lives in, and his cousin just goes about farming on the land. He was already farming it because his uncle was old and couldn't take care of it, so literally nothing changed. It was just as if he was still growing the stuff he was already growing. But this Karen couple just starts immediately bothering his cousin now. Anytime he's out working in the field, whether it be with equipment, whether it be like just trying to get stuff done, they just go over and just harass him saying that he's obligated to sell to them and he has to sell to them. And when he asked, like, why do I have to sell to you? Why would I do that? If I've been working on the land my entire life and now I own it, why would I sell it to you when I don't know you? Because of the neighborly code. That was actually their answer. And I've never heard of this neighborly code that they're even talking about. I don't know if it's written down somewhere. Google search didn't help me. But if there is some neighborly code, I highly doubt a part of it is that you have to sell your property to your neighbor for whatever price they want, whenever you want. 
I don't think that would be legally binding, and it would also be insanely stupid. Could you imagine, dude? You're like, hey, you just have to sell me your house right now. And that rubs the cousin the wrong way, because he doesn't want to be told what to do, and they're just harassing him about it. He's getting to the point where he doesn't, like, want to even go work on that part of the field, because every time he's there, they come over and start yelling at him about being a bad neighbor because he doesn't want to let himself get scammed because of some made-up code of rules that they have. And so finally, one day, he just kind of loses it on him and tells him to take a hike, not too nicely, and says if they ever come back to the property, he's going to call the cops, and they're going to be cited for trespassing, and he's had enough, they're never going to own the land, no way, never, it's not going to happen. And they react extremely poorly to that, but they start yelling at him, calling him impatient. And listen, I feel like this would have been a justified response day one. The fact that he had let you guys come up and do this to him multiple times and not started screaming at you shows that he's been extremely patient. I love that now that he freaks out like time 50, he's the impatient one. And they say that they're going to be uh, writing the neighborly code down and sending him letters as if that's going to change anything. But sure enough, letters start showing up at the cousin's house, which is right on the other side, like two streets away, handwritten on notebook paper, saying that if he didn't comply with the neighborly code attached, then they were going to sue him in the neighborhood court. And I love when people start being like, I'm going to sue you in the court of da 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 da, because there's only one court that matters, all right? It's uh, the United States court, like the state courts, the federal courts. You can sue me in neighborhood court, whatever that is, dude. What are they going to do? Like, get angry at me and not invite me to a barbecue? It's not like anything would be legally binding about a neighbor court, and I don't even know what that would entail. Is it just your drunk neighbor Ted in a powdered wig just trying to conduct court nine beers deep? You're guilty because I didn't like that, and that was not nice. Thank goodness that's not how it works. Obviously, the cousin is just ignoring the letters because it's stupid and he has no reason to listen to it. And then it starts showing up at the subscriber who sent this to me's house. Keep in mind, this person lives in another state. They live in a city, which it's not easy to track people down in. So somehow they had gotten his address. And his letter is the neighborly code with a subsection, I don't know if they wrote this code themselves, saying that if the owner of a property lives out of state, he has an obligation to sell it to people who live in the state. And he doesn't even reply, but that's literally what he did. This neighborly code doesn't exist, but he sold it to his cousin who lives in the state. And the way that this stuff was worded was really, really annoying. Because it was like somebody had watched way too much of Law and Order or those crime shows where they say legal jargon but didn't understand what any of it meant. They would say like, you are uh, contractually obligated to do this. And it's like, well, they never signed a contract, so that's just not how that terminology works. And when the letters didn't work on either of them, they started coming to the door of the cousin with like suit and pantsuits on as a team saying that they were going to be filing a lawsuit and da 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 and now they're using all these legal words wrong in person, which is even more embarrassing. And at one point, they told the cousin that if he didn't agree to sell it to them, then he was going to be forced to take a plea deal. And I think plea deals are only for criminal things. I don't think if you sue someone, like, in civil court that they can really, uh, make someone take a plea deal. That's more for crimes, and you can't force someone to take a plea deal. That person has to take a plea deal. I love them. We're just gonna strong arm you into doing exactly what we want in our made-up court that doesn't exist. And at that point, he, they've watched too much TV. They're being annoying. Now they're showing up to his house. They had probably doxed the guy that they were sending letters to. So the cousin and the subscriber decide that they're going to get their own lawyer. And their own lawyer gathers all this stuff and says, okay, next time they come, notify them that if they come again, you're going to report them to the police for the harassment and you've collected everything they've done. So they come back and the cousin says, like, you guys really need to leave us alone. We've gathered everything you've been doing to us and we're going to report you for harassment if you guys ever come back on this property and bother us again and they blow him off saying that they're not afraid of the police because the police don't enforce the neighborly codes 
I don't know what code they're talking about, dude, but I would love to see how that went down. Could you imagine, like, they get pulled over? Excuse me, officer, you're not my neighbor, so therefore you cannot tell me I was speeding. Well, sir, what I can tell you to do is get out of the car. So they try to come back, they contact their lawyer, the lawyer turns in this paperwork, the police come out and talk to the cousin, the cousin says, I don't want them to go to jail, I just don't want them allowed over here anymore. So sure enough, they get like a temporary protective order, which means they're not allowed to step onto this guy's property. And they're freaking out now, they're like posting on Facebook that he's evil and he's trying to work with the police to silence their political ideology. I don't know what political ideology the neighborly code would be, but whatever. And so they're just losing their minds. Meanwhile, anytime they do try to come back over, it's just going to end up with them violating a protective order. I wouldn't make up laws and then go harass people, find out people's address, send them threatening letters, show up to their house, and time and time again after they warn you to stop, just keep going, because eventually it's going to bite you in the butt. And if they do violate that order, I would love to see them get in front of the judge and be like, he wasn't a good neighbor for selling me his house for three dollars. I just can't believe people like this exist. The person told me they would send me an update if anything happens, so comment down below if you want me to do part two. Just comment part two, but we got more stories today. All right, this next one's crazy. I can't believe people have the audacity to do this, but people were just using his pool when he wasn't home. So the person who sent this to me moved into a neighborhood, and I guess the guy who had lived in his house before him had lived there forever and knew everyone really well, and this guy wasn't mean to everyone, but like, didn't know everybody, if that makes sense. Was just a normal person in that regard. But he ended up getting a pool built, and he built it for him to enjoy. I feel like that's common sense. If you put a pool in your backyard, it's not for everybody to enjoy, it's for you and your friends to enjoy. But he works a lot, and for the most part, he would come home, go in the backyard, sit by the pool, read a book, swim, and it would seem like everything would be left the way he left it. But he comes home one day, and he's a little confused, because it looks like people were using his pool. And the person who sent this to me isn't, like, insanely OCD, but he lives alone, so it was weird, because there were two towels out, and even if he would have forgotten it, it would have only been one. But he doesn't know for sure that someone's been using his pool, like maybe he just left two towels out he can't really remember, so he just brushes it off. But it paranoys him enough where he's like, I'm gonna put a lock on the gate just because, you know, maybe I should anyways, I don't want kids going in the backyard and falling in the pool or whatever. I'm not home all the time, it's better safe than sorry. So he goes, gets a lock, sets the combination to something different than the number I'm about to say, but puts it back to 0000. And that's just something he had done since like middle school on all the locks he had on his lockers and stuff, he would just put it back to those numbers. So he would leave it there, put in the combination, set it back to 0000. That's gonna be important. And so he leaves the next day pretty confident that he's going to come back and no one will have been in the backyard because I feel like that's just an unspoken assumption. If you leave for the day, you don't expect people to be rummaging through your backyard using your pool. But he comes back and sure enough, there's two towels out again. And now he knows for sure something is up, something's weird because he picked it up yesterday, but he knows he didn't leave two out. And he goes over to the lock and he looks and the lock is still on the fence, but its numbers are off. It looks like somebody had tried to unlock it and then probably just hopped the fence. It's not insanely tall. And this happened on a Tuesday. And this guy who sent this to me happened to have Wednesdays and Thursdays off. But most people would assume that the person would still be working Wednesday and Thursday if they're just using your pool while you're at work. He stays up really late that night playing video games, goofing off, not really thinking about getting a super early wake up because it's his day off. It's not like waking up early was number one on his priority list. But he gets woken up at like 10 a.m. from sounds that sound like they're coming from the backyard, which is bizarre because like I said, lives alone. And he looks out the window just being like, what in the world is going on out there? And he can't believe his eyes. He didn't know the neighbors well, but he knew that he lived next to this couple. And the couple is just full on in his pool outside. They have like sodas out. They have a cooler. They're playing music. If you didn't know any better, dude, you would think that this was like a public pool and they were lucky enough to be the only people there for the day. 
So he's really confused and storms outside, not in the best mood, because he just woke up, and on top of it, there's strangers in his backyard using his pool, and he goes out there and is like, you guys gotta leave, what's wrong with you? You can't use my pool. And they look at him and say, why? Why can't we use your pool? The guy who lived here before would have let us. And the owner of the pool can't believe how stupid of a statement that is, because that guy doesn't live here anymore. It doesn't matter if the guy who lived here before would have let you swim in his pool. I'm not that guy, so get out of here. And he explains that it's his pool, and on top of that, he really doesn't want people using it when he's not home, so they can't use it anymore, because they clearly don't respect him if they've been sneaking into the backyard. And he's pretty pissed off while he's explaining this, rightfully so. I think anyone would be pissed in this situation. You catch people swimming in your pool. And they're lucky that he's not, like, gonna do more about it other than just tell them to leave. Like, I would've, I don't know, called the cops, trespassed them, something, I don't know. That's just weird. But they start getting angry with him, being like, why are you so mad? You could be nice about it. What do you want him to be nice about? You sneaking into his property and using stuff while he's not there? And on top of that, you jumped a locked gate. Like, you can't even make the argument that the gate was unlocked. So he says that to him. What would you like me to be nice about? You jumping a locked fence? And they look at him and probably had no reason to keep arguing with him at that point because they don't really offer any explanation. But their response to that is just, well, we want to swim. Well, that's great, man. I want a billion dollars. It doesn't give me the justification to just walk into Fort Knox and take some gold. Uh, it, just because you want something doesn't mean you can go get it. You want to swim that bad, you get a pool. And so he says, I don't care if you guys want to swim. That's not my problem. You guys can't swim in my backyard, especially when I'm not here. That's weird. And they kind of give him this rant about he could just be nice about it. There was no reason to come out and make a scene and make them feel bad about it. And now they felt weird. And he's like, yeah, you guys should feel weird. This is really weird. Using people's stuff when they're not home without their permission is just bizarre. That's not a cool thing to do. And so they leave and he tells them, like, seriously, do not come back. And later that night, his phone starts blowing up. I don't know if you guys know what Nextdoor is. It's kind of like a forum where everyone can post about the neighborhood. Well, they had posted saying that he was mean and had kicked them out of the pool when they were swimming back there and they should be allowed to use their neighbor's pool. And thankfully, it seemed like most of the other neighborhoods still had brain cells because they were immediately like, wait, did you have permission to use his pool? And they admitted on this post that no, they didn't have permission, but they just assumed because neighbors share everything that they should just be allowed to use it. And after that, every comment was like, A, we don't share everything. There's a reason you're not allowed to borrow my car whenever you want. That's insane. And B, yeah, do you realize how many issues there are with you using his pool without his permission? What if you guys got hurt back there? What if you guys drown? Like, there's so many reasons you don't want people using it. And on top of it, it's just weird to go in someone's backyard when they're not home. Like, why would you even do that, man? Oh, Tim's not home? Oh, sick. I'm gonna go in the backyard and throw the football. His backyard. It's just better than mine. If you really want a pool that bad where you're gonna break into your neighbor's backyard to do it while they're not home, just build your own. I get they're expensive, but clearly it means a lot to you. It needs to be your priority. We can't afford a pool. Yeah, you probably can't afford the lawsuit that's gonna come if you keep breaking into people's backyards either, so you might want to play it safe and just avoid it in the future. I couldn't imagine being that entitled. Just, oh, uh, I want to go swimming, so I'm gonna go break into the neighbor's backyard. It's all right. And listen, before someone comments like, oh, I had a neighbor that was my age and we would be allowed to swim at his pool when they weren't home. It's different if there's been a conversation and like, I don't know, like I had a neighbor who had a bunch of siblings and whatnot and they had a pool and they were like, Ryan, you can just come swimming because one of the kids will probably come swim too. But that had been a conversation. I would have never just walked into their backyard if I didn't know them and start swimming in their pool. I also feel like that's a great way to end up on the opposite end of something being pointed at you that you don't want being pointed at you and someone calling the cops, all right? And being like, stay there until the police get here because you're trespassing in my property. So this last one we've got, this guy just moved into an apartment complex. And whenever you move into an apartment complex, it's always tricky because the person before you probably had internet. And if you're like really into video games and whatnot, the person before you probably didn't have good enough internet. So you need to get it changed. 
And so this guy switched from the internet that the person had had before that was like not even password protected, barely even worked, basically dial up speed over to something faster and knew that uh, it was smart to have a password on his Wi-Fi network. So we ended up putting a password on. It wasn't even insane. But the old network name was just the unit number. So he ended up keeping that because he just didn't really care. He thought it was easy to explain to guests. Oh yeah, it's da-da-da, like the unit of the apartment. Oh, okay, they would figure that out, be able to hop on, no problem. So he didn't think there was going to be any issue until one night he's sitting on the couch playing Xbox, and there's an angry pounding on the door, just doo 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 and you can just tell from the way that the person's pounding, it's either A, the police here to conduct a raid on your house, or B, it's an angry neighbor. So he goes, looks through the peephole, and sees it's like a guy around his age that he thought lived above, across from him, kind of like diagonally up. So he opens it, and the guy's like, why did you put a password on your Wi-Fi? And he's confused, and he's like, what do you mean? How do you know I put a password on my Wi-Fi? And he's like, I've been using that Wi-Fi for all of the three years that I've lived here, and you need to let me on it right now. And the guy's confused, because two seconds ago he's sitting on his couch playing Xbox, and now this guy's telling him that he was basically stealing Wi-Fi from the person who lived there before him. And so he kind of tells the guy, like, sorry, I got rid of that, and I'm not going to give you the password because I don't know you. I'm not going to let you use my Wi-Fi. And the guy starts trying to argue with him, being like, well, if you're going to pay for it anyways, what's the point of hogging it all to yourself? I don't know, man. You're paying rent in this building. Why do you not have the capability to pay for the Wi-Fi? And why would I want you on my Wi-Fi? And so he starts trying to explain to this dude, A, he should probably have his own Wi-Fi, and B, he works from home, does a lot of stuff with work, and can't have people on his network. Because it's a security issue. And the guy looks at him and says, Well, what if I promise that I won't do anything that'll put your security at risk? Oh yeah, you promise, dude? You pinky promise? He just told you that it's a security issue. And now you look at him and say, I pinky promise I won't do anything. That's like someone telling you, You can't stay here. There's valuable stuff you can't be left alone with. And you look at them and say, I pinky promise I won't steal it. They're just not going to let you do that. So he tells the guy, like, no, I'm not going to let you on the network. I'm sorry. Maybe somebody else will let you bum Wi-Fi off them, but I'm not going to let you do that. And he's like, oh, you think I'm bumming Wi-Fi, dude? I was just trying to ask for some help. And he says, yeah, I think you're trying to bum Wi-Fi. That's the definition of what you're doing, dude. You were stealing Wi-Fi from the neighbor near you who didn't have it password protected. And now I changed it and put a password on it. And you're at my door complaining to me about the fact that I put a password on it. What else would you call it? And he's like, wow, man, I just expected people in this complex to be a little bit more generous. People like this guy are the reason people aren't generous anymore, dude, because people just take it for granted and take advantage of it. If you got free Wi-Fi for three years and then someone else moved in and changed it to password protected, you shouldn't even go over and give them crap for that. They didn't know what the prior agreement was. They don't know the person who used to live there. And it's so weird to go over to a stranger and be like, hey, give me your Wi-Fi password so I can do all my stuff that I was doing on the Wi-Fi before. What a weird situation. And then to be mad at them for not wanting to let you on. I pinky promise I won't steal anything. Okay, uh, well, no, still no. And I love that people try to make people feel bad for saying no now, too. Like, if you don't want to let someone on your Wi-Fi network, that's okay. That's a perfectly normal thing. If anyone tries to make you feel bad for that, just know that they are dumb. It's not the other way around. And so he keeps firmly telling the guy, like, no, no, no. And he's not dropping it. He's sitting there being like, I'm not going to leave until you let me on your Wi-Fi network. And so the guy says, okay, leaves the door open and just stares at him and just stands there. And the guy just keeps being like, I'm serious. I'm not going to leave until you give me the Wi-Fi password. And the person's just standing in the door saying, okay. And then going right back to staring at him. And he's kind of like, dude, how long are you going to stand here before you give me the password? And he tells him again, I'm not going to give it to you. So we can stand here all day. I can do this all day. I've got nothing going on. I'm not going to give you the password. And he's like, oh, bro, there's no reason to be so stubborn. 
Yeah, there's also no reason for you to be so stubborn either. You've been waiting an equally long time. This is just a stubborn off at this point, and I understand why the person who sent this to me is not going to back down. I'm not going to try to go out of my way to start a petty off, but if you make it a petty situation, I will be more petty than you. I feel like you've really got no choice. I I'm sure most of you guys would agree. It's kind of like fighting, you know? Nobody wants to fight, but if someone punches you in the face, you gotta punch them back harder than they hit you. It's just kind of like the rules here. And this is uh, a standoff punch in the face situation. And eventually the neighbor gets so irritated that he's like, you know what, man, forget it. I'll just ask somebody else that's gonna be more kind. And he's like, yeah, go for it, bro. Have a good one. And closed the door and went back to playing his video game. And ever since then, whenever he sees that guy, he like gives him a dirty look and mumbles things under his breath, but he can live with that, man. Sorry. I, I don't know. I know it would probably bug some people if their neighbors didn't like him, but to me, it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. They're just strangers who live next to you. It's not like you have to enjoy each other's company. It's really okay. I'm not going to go out of my way to be disliked by somebody, but if someone disliked me for a reason that stupid, it'd be okay with me. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. This was a longer one, so if you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate you guys pressing the like button. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought. If you've made it this far, go ahead and comment the word Star Wars down below. I'm going to keep doing the Star Wars gameplay all the way through, so be sure to check back for the next video if you've been enjoying that. And uh, yeah, beyond that, subscribe if you're new as well. I post videos like this every other day. And if you want to listen to the audio version of these, I do post the audio version on Spotify. Link down below. Feel free to go check that out if you want. But uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that'll do it. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. Hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go steal someone's Wi-Fi. I'm out. Peace.